Hi everyone, welcome to 2011 Studies. My name is Marty Catuzzo. We're continuing on in the study of Be Fruitful and Multiply. Um, this is part two. Uh, there's, this is going to be probably maybe even up to six or seven. I don't know, but it, the more I study this, the more it leads to other places. So we have to uh, start declaring this um, right now because uh, I believe that you know God is going to bless his people to be fruitful and multiply and that relates to salvation um, as God's Spirit goes out and saves. Um, I mentioned some of this information in the book Countdown to the Last Day uh, where I spoke about uh, Zerubbabel when they see the the plummet in the hands um, of Zerubbabel you know he began the work of the house of God and he will finish it. Of course this relates to uh, Christ himself who has the chief cornerstone uh, laid down his life um, and was resurrected. We're coming upon that season of, of the celebration of his resurrection. And that, that cornerstone, uh, as we're, we are built as lively stones in the house of God upon that. And toward the end of time, which we are living, um, God in a great way is going to be magnified. And I wanted to uh, make clear this at this time in history because uh, before it happens and we're gonna see this and I you know the more verses I'm studying on this the more I'm seeing that the nations will know um, and it's the type of thing when when God's judgment falls um, whether as a chastisement or a correction uh, the nations are gonna know that it is from God so let's look at this, and this is entitled The Nations Will Know When God is Magnified. Um, this is Joel 2.20. Now I wanted to open with this. This is what I spoke about in the book. and um, I will, This is uh, Joel 2.20, but I will remove far off from you the northern army. That army's uh, italicized. It should be, just read, remove far off from you the northern and will drive him into a land barren and desolate with his face toward the east sea and his hinder part toward the utmost sea and his stink shall come up and his ill savor shall come up because he has done great things um, that we're focusing today on that uh, great things which is the word gadol the Hebrew word um, it, it is um, Another word for that would be tra translated as uh, he has been magnified or magnified himself. Now this is speaking of Satan, I believe, and we're, we're going to see here how God reverses things at one point in history. And it could very well be that as God commands uh, Noah and his family after the 377 days to be fruitful and multiply, there's a coinciding with uh, the judgment uh, as God is magnified and those who magnify themselves against God and his people uh, will be brought low. So let's look at this. This is, uh, this is speaking of uh, how God will be magnified in verse 21. Fear not, O land, be glad and rejoice, for the Lord will do great things. In other words, the Lord will be magnified. Be not afraid, ye beasts of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness do spring. For the tree beareth her fruit, the fig tree and the vine do yield their strength. Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain and the latter rain, uh, in the first, or as the first. That's, you know, subject to interpretation right there. Um, and the floors shall be full of wheat and the fat shall be and the fat shall overflow with wine and oil and I will restore to you the years that the locust has eaten and the, the cank worm and the caterpillar and the pommel worm my great army which I sent among you now when God removes the northern um, and it doesn't mean that uh, he's destroyed at that point he's just removed in the sense that he is removed to a certain uh, location. I spoke about it, that in, in the book. I'm not going to get into that right now. But the focus here is when God does this, he will be magnified. And that magnifying of God, the glory of God will cover the earth. 
that relates so much to salvation is uh you know so does the the term be fruitful and, and multiply his his word goes out the letters of peace and truth go out in a great way and uh the word um do great things or magnified is if you want to look this up is uh h or hebrew 1431 and it's g a d a l gadal um there are other scriptures which use this hebrew word as it's associated with god being magnified um I want to first say that this is yet again another powerful reversal that God performs. I'm seeing them all over the Bible now. I just, it's amazing because it's like, oh, there's another reversal. There's another one. As you continue to study, you see how God allowed certain things to happen, certain things to transpire near the end, and then God will be magnified. And not only did the king of Babylon admit this and proclaim this, uh, but God's word is is underscoring this truth that he will be magnified in a great way toward the end. Um, we're going to speak a little bit on uh, get back to the glory of Moab uh, because there's verses that relate to this uh, study and speak of uh, Moab too. Uh, let's see. I you know I really believe that at, at one point God is going to begin to abase all earthly glory. You know, we can't we can't self-magnify ourselves at this point in history or any time in history for that matter. Uh because those who are proud and those who have lifted themselves up, that is a sign of Satan working. Uh, that is what he does. Uh in 2 Thessalonians, he he lifts himself up to be as God in and, and sits in the temple in the houses of God. And accomplishes uh, his false worship. This is Zephaniah chapter 2, an exhortation to repentance. Verse 1 Gather yourselves together, yea, gather, gather together, O nation not desired. Before the decree bring forth, before the day pass as the chaff, before the, the fierce anger of the Lord comes upon you, before the day of the Lord's anger comes upon you. Seek ye the Lord, all ye meek of the earth, which have wrought his judgment. Seek righteousness, seek meekness. It may, it may be ye shall be hid in the days of the Lord, Lord's anger. Now, then it goes on in Zephaniah to uh, talk about the judgment on the Philistines, uh, judgment on Moab and Ammon, um, just different judgments uh, that come upon Ethiopian and Assyria, and God is again using historical accounts to show what will happen in the fallen houses of God, as he, he relates these names to the fallen houses of God. For Gaza shall be forsaken, and Ashkelon a desolation. They shall drive out Ashdod at noonday, and Ekron shall be rooted up. Woe unto the inhabitants of the seacoast, the nation of the Cherethites. The word of the Lord is against you, O Canaan, the land of, Philist of the Philistines. I will even destroy thee, that there shall be no inhabitant. And the seacoast shall be dwellings and cottages for shepherds, and folds for flocks. And, and the coast shall be for the remnant of the house of Judah. They shall feed thereupon. In the houses of Ashkelon they shall lie down in the evening, for the Lord their God shall visit them and turn away their captivity. Judgment of Moab and Ammon. Verse 8. I have heard the reproach of Moab and the revilings of the children of Ammon, which they have reproached my people and magnified, that's the word Gadol, themselves against their border. Therefore, as I live, saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, surely Moab shall be as Sodom, and the children of Ammon as Gomorrah, even the breeding of the nettles and salt pits, and a perpetual desolation. The residue of my people shall spoil them, and the remnant of my people shall possess them. This shall they have for their pride, 
because they have reproached and magnified themselves against the people of the Lord of the of the people of the Lord of hosts. The Lord will be terrible unto them, for he will famish all the gods of the earth, and men shall worship him, every one from his place, even all the isles of the heathen. Now this is the judgment of Ethiopia and Assyria. Ye Ethiopians also, ye shall be slain by my sword. And he will stretch out his hand against the north and destroy Assyria. He will make Nineveh a desolation, like a dry wilderness. And the flock shall lie down in the midst of her, all the beasts of the nations, both the cormorant and the bittern, shall lodge in the upper lintels of it. Their voice shall sing in the windows, desolation shall be in the thresholds. For he shall undercover the cedar work. This is the rejoicing city that dwelt carelessly, that said in her heart, I am, and there is none besides me. How she has become a desolation, a place for beasts to lie down in. Every one that passeth by her shall hiss and wag his hand. Uh, the focus here uh, I wanted to point out is, um, for he shall uncover the cedar work. Interesting language that, that God just sort of threw that in there, but there's that's a reason for mentioning the cedar work. Um, the uncovering of the cedar work, cedar work relates to the building of the house of God. Um, in the Old Testament, there's examples of how the house of God will, was built from the finest um, uh, cedars of Lebanon. Uh, in Zechariah 11, I got to turn this light on a little better. I'm using these new glasses that are Magnavision glasses for um, the computer screen to block out the blue light, and uh, it does really help focus on on white too. So it, it's sort of a good thing. Uh, Zechariah 11:1. Open thy doors, O Lebanon, that the fire may devour the cedars. Howl for a tree, for the cedar is fallen, because the mighty are spoiled. Howl, O ye oaks of Bashan, for the forest of the vintage is come down. There is a voice of the howling of the shepherds, for their glory is spoiled. A voice of the roaring of the young lions, for the pride of Jordan is spoiled. Thus saith the Lord my God, Feed the flock of the slaughter, whose possessors slay them, and hold themselves not guilty, but they that sell them say, Blessed be the Lord, for I am rich, and their own shepherds pity them not. Now this is the great merchant city of Tyre. This relates to the house of God also, because what Tyre did was trafficked. And this traffic of this merchant city, the seacoast city, we really haven't uh, touched on that much. Um, I'd encourage you to just, you know, T Y R E, look up the Tyrus or Tyre, and study how all that is related. And then you're going to focus from that language in the Old Testament about Tyre, focus a little bit into Revelation and see some of that same similar language, and you'll see how it relates to fallen Babylon. Um, let's see, this is Ezekiel. Uh, 27 2 now thou son of man take up a lamentation for Tyrus and say unto Tyrus O thou that are situate at the entry of the sea which art a merchant of the people for many isles thus saith the Lord God O Tyrus thou hast said I am perfect O I am of perfect beauty thy borders are in the midst of the seas thy builders have per perfected thy beauty they have made all the ships boards of fir trees of Sinar. They have taken cedars from Lebanon to make masks thereof. There's that relationship to the, the cedars and making masks or po poles or posts. Of the oaks of Bashan, they have made thine oars. The company of the Azurites, they have made thy benches of ivory. Brought out from the isles of Chittim. Now, <clears throat> uncovering the cedar wood, the cedar wood or the work, is similar to the proclamation that nothing will be hit when God's judgment falls upon the fallen houses of God. The pride will be brought low. The self-magnification will be abased. 
Um, the timing of this, you know, this is all important to get the timing uh, correct. And I, the more I'm studying this, it almost seems like there's a, a, a sinking or a dual thing happening. When God is magnified and his people begin to be fruitful and multiply, that uh, sort of ushers in, when God, in other words, when God is magnified, uh, self-magnification will be brought low. And that's important to see because I think some of this language is speaking of that time. And, you know, again, when God told Noah and his family to be fruitful and multiply after the 377 days, after the, the waters of Noah uh, were dried up, the earth was dry, and they exited the ark, that command, I really believe, relates to the believers during this time as we enter May 31. And how that's going to all take place, that's in God's hands. Um, we need to proclaim this though and um, whether you proclaim it on your own or or you know others um, duplicate uh, by getting a YouTube channel and duplicate some of these studies out there to let it be known that God will be magnified this is a time we're entering folks and it's exciting it's exciting because the believers have gone through a, a difficult time called the time of great tribulation um, and God does reverse things. He has extreme mercy uh, with his people. And even, you know, the believers uh, are not spotless as they've gone through this great tribulation. Uh, the believers have washed their robes white uh, in the blood of the Lamb. That's what, that's what the Bible declares, which means that the believers, uh, as sinners, uh, endured a great uh, affliction and, and tribulation period in which uh, their lives were not you know, perfect examples of living for Christ. And that's why when, when God is jealous for His name, you know, He does this uh, to magnify His name. And we can't lift ourselves up and proclaim you know, we were great during this time because we weren't. That's just the fact. Um, there was a lot of arguing going on. There was a lot of sword against sword. Um, brother against brother. There's just all this language that God has put in His Word as a as a map to show what not only what happens, but what happens after all that happens. And that's exciting. There's some verses in here that I came across today that I I really think are encouraging because um, no more will will God's um, word be prolonged or His prophesying of you know the declaration of his word be prolonged it, it will come to pass because he will speedily bring it to pass um, now we want to look at other um, times in history when self magnification uh, is brought low and of course this all relates to the activity of Satan how he magnifies himself throughout history I mean that's that could be seen um, in the nations uh, that God brought judgment upon, um, it could be seen on His own people, who He brings the enemy as a chastisement and as a judgment. Um, so it relates. To, it relates to everybody. Uh, Sodom and Gomorrah. Now Lot is sent to safety. Genesis nine two. Um, the the focus here again is on this uh, Hebrew word gadol to be magnified, um, and this explains, you know, why God's judgment fell on Sodom and Gomorrah. And this is Genesis 9:12. And the men said unto Lot, "Hast, hast thou here any besides son-in-law, and thy sons and thy daughters, and whatsoever thou hast in the city, bring them out of this place, for we will destroy this place, because the cry of them is waxen great, magnified." before the face of the Lord and the Lord has sent us to destroy it now when God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah that was an historical account but again there is certain passages in the Bible that where God is reliving history and using that example to show how the overthrowing of the houses of worship will happen um, God relates the fall of Sodom to the fallen houses of worship in these verses. And remember, we already talked about how Sodom in Egypt uh, is another name for the fallen houses of worship in the book of Revelation. 
as Babylon has fallen has fallen. Now this is Isaiah thirteen seventeen. Behold, I will stir up the Medes against them, which shall not regard silver, and as for gold they shall not delight in it. Their bows also shall dash the young men to pieces, and they shall have no pity on the fruit of their womb. Their eye will, shall not spare children. And Babylon, the glory of the kingdoms, the beauty of the Chaldees' ex excellency, shall be as when God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. Now here we have the connection in Revelation to this verse, and um, I think I mentioned, yeah, this is Isaiah 13, where God is debasing the glory of the kingdoms. Now, and he's, he's speaking of it in relationship to when God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. Um, so when we see that connection in Revelation to Babel, fallen Babylon and the houses of worship, we know that judgment is going to come. And God relates it not only to uh, the kingdom of Babylon, but also he relates it to the destruction of the um, fallen houses of worship and Sodom and Gomorrah. Um, this historical Edom magnify themselves against this is point two historical Edom magnified themselves against God's people as those in the houses of God magnify themselves against those who have departed out now I've, I've noticed this I've noticed there is really just this um, just odd spirit going on um, between those who are proclaiming you know depart out because that's a command of God. Come out over my people that you don't partake in her sins and that you're not affected with the plagues that come. Now, I don't believe we've entered that time yet that uh, God's judgment has completely fallen. This is a like a prelude to it to warn people. You know, we need to we need to turn to God, flee to his righteousness and his word and obey those commands because it's all important to do at this time. Um Let's see, Edom uh, magnified themselves, and this is some of the language in Obadiah chapter 1, the destruction of Edom. The vision of Obadiah, thus saith the Lord God concerning Edom, We have heard a rumor from the Lord, an ambassador is sent among the heathen. Arise ye, and let us rise up against her in battle. Behold, I have made thee small among the heathen. Thou art greatly despised. The pride of thine heart has deceived thee. Thou hast dwelt in the cliffs of the rock, whose habitation is high, and has said in his heart, Who shall bring me down to the ground? Though thou exalt thyself as an eagle, and though thou set thy nest among the stars, thence will I bring thee down, saith the Lord. For thy violence against thy brother Jacob shame shall cover thee and thou shall be cut off forever now we, we in the last study we presented how Jacob represented Israel his name was changed to Israel and how Israel the Israel of God is related to the believers in Christ um, so when it speaks of this violence against thy brother um, and the judgment on Edom we see this uh, as relating to a judgment of the end in the day that thou stoodest, now I'm jumping down to verse 11 and 12 here. In the day that thou stoodest on the other side, in the day that the strangers carried away captives, captive his forces, and foreigners entered into his gates, and cast lots upon Jerusalem, even thou was one of them. But thou should have not have looked on the day of thy brother, in the day that he became a stranger, neither should have thou have rejoiced over the children of Judah in the day of their destruction. Neither shall thou have spoken proudly, that's that Hebrew word gedal, magnified themselves, in the day of distress. Thou should not have entered into the gate of my people in the day of their calamity. Yea, thou should not have looked on their affliction in the day of their calamity, nor have laid hands on their substance in the day of their calamity. Verse 14 Neither should thou have stood in the crossway to cut off those 
cut off those of his that did escape. Neither shouldest thou have delivered up those of his that did remain in the day of distress. For the day of the Lord is near upon all the heathen. As thou hast done, it shall be done unto thee. Thy reward shall return upon thine own head. Again, another reversal by God. Um, and this is God's equity. This is absolute God's righteousness and his equity. Uh, I'm going to read that again, verse 15. For the day of the Lord is near upon all the heathen. As thou hast done, it shall be done unto thee. Thy reward shall return upon thine own head. For as we have drunk upon my holy mountain, for as ye have drunk upon my holy mountain, so shall all the heathen drink continually. Yea, they shall drink, and they shall swallow down, and they shall be as though they had not, had not been. Now here's God's reversal of the salvation and victory of Jacob, Israel. Verse 17. But upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance, and there shall be holiness, and the house of Jacob shall possess their possessions. And the house of Jacob shall be a fire, and the house of Joseph a flame, and the house of Esau for stubble, and they shall they shall kindle in them and devour them, and there shall be and there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau, for the Lord has spoken it. And they of the south shall possess the mount of Esau, and they of the plains of the Philistines, they shall possess the fields of Ephraim, and the fields of Samaria, and Benjamin shall possess Gilead. And the captivity of the hosts of the children of Israel shall possess that of the Canaanites, even unto Zarephath, and the captivity of Jerusalem, which is in Shepharad, and shall possess the cities of the south. And Savior shall come up upon Mount Zion to judge the Mount of Israel. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I had to repeat that. Verse 21. And Savior shall come up upon Mount Zion to judge the Mount of Esau, and the kingdom shall be the Lord's. Man, this language of uh, how God uses history, and again, I... I you have to underscore this. He's, he is not talking about races here. He is talking about what happened historically um, and how that relates to those who lifted themselves up historically with pride and magnified themselves against Israel. And then God at the end, he transfers that historical account to show how the houses of God have, have magnified themselves. And whether he uses Babylon whether he uses uh, the captivity of Babylon, whether he uses uh, Edom, uh, any historical account, um, the glory of Kedar uh, shall be brought low in, in, in within one year. Um, the glory of Moab shall be brought low within three years. Uh, we've done, we discussed this, and we've, I presented this for this, the sole reason of doing it, you know, before this happens. The, the nations will know when God's judgment falls upon uh, the fallen houses of worship. And if people think that that can't happen, go study the New Testament where Christ overthrew the money changers. Uh, how the, the house of God, the house of prayer, had become a house of merchandise. And it's just, it's, it's incredible, incredible language used there, how that example is what God will do to the fallen houses of worship near the end. Um, and again, when Christ said destroy this temple, he was talking about his body. And after that was he was resurrected, um, it was raised uh, again, it was raised after he was crucified in, within three days. And that temple, the starting of the building of the house of God began at that point. And for 2,000 years, it's gone on. Now we get to a similar reenactment of how the houses of God have become the houses of merchandise, so on and so on. And uh, if God's judgment was back then, and it's greater now because it's worldwide, uh, it's going to be a, a great reversal that God does.
and this magnification that's going on uh, will not continue. It will not. Like I say here, um, you know, Satan's magnification only goes so far and for so long. God only gives, uh, you know, so much time before he reverses things. Now, I relating this um, historical account, the timing of it all, on how when God abases the uh, the, the self magnification. Uh, it could very well be around May of this year because that would end the 377 days of the waters of Noah when God proclaimed to Noah and his family be fruitful and multiply. So, and that is definitely language of blessing. We haven't gone into all the verses that speak of be fruitful and multiply. Uh, some some were direct statements um, like to Abraham, uh, how God will bless him and uh, how that word bless is so associated with be fruitful and multiply and how he would be a father of many of a great nation and uh, all that relates it all relates now this is uh, Daniel 11 and I have to say Daniel 11 is has to be for me the most difficult book in the Bible I don't know how many times I've gone over it I'm getting little bits of information here and there but it's still uh, it's very difficult to understand and uh, but these this language does really relate Daniel 1132 and as such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt by flatteries but the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits and they that understand among the people shall instruct many yet they shall fall by the sword and by the flame, by captivity, and by spoil many days. Now, when they shall fall, they shall be holpen with a little help. There's a little help there. But many shall cleave to them with flatteries. And some, no, it, actually that's not correct. It, 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 in the King James translation it says, and some, but that, that word is italicized. So it's, it should read, and them of understanding shall fall. Uh, those who understand the things of God uh, near the end shall fall to try them and to purge and to make them white even to the time of the end because it is yet for an appointed time or a time appointed. And the king shall do according to his will and he shall exalt himself and magnify himself above every god and shall speak marvelous things against the God of gods, and shall prosper till the indignation shall be accomplished, for that that is determined shall be done. Now here you have Satan lifting himself up against the God of gods, and if, if he works through people, uh, this evidence of this has been seen already. I mean, this lifting themselves up and not allowing the, the brother to pass and so on and so on. So we have all this self magnification uh, going on and you can look up the word uh, glory, you can look up uh, gadol, this Hebrew word and you can see a grand picture of how throughout history this has happened and how God has abased those who self glory uh, in themselves and come against uh, his people. Now, we have to remember there's only a certain amount of time for this to take place and then God reverses things. Um, and according to Joel 2 and, and other passages in the Bible, this is sure, it is secure, it will happen. Um, Psalm 35, 24 Judge me, O Lord my God, according to thy righteousness and let, let them not rejoice over me. Let them not say in their hearts, Ah, so we have so we have it. Let them not say we have swallowed him up. Let them be ashamed and brought to confusion together that rejoice at mine hurt. Let them be clothed with shame and dishonor that magnify themselves against me. Let them shout for joy and be glad that favor my righteousness. Oh, I'm sorry. Let them shout for joy and be glad that favor my righteous cause. Yea, let them say continually, Let the Lord be magnified. 
which hath pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. And my tongue shall speak of the righteousness and of the praise and of thy praise all day long. And my tongue shall speak of thy righteousness and of thy praise all day long. This is Psalm um, uh, 41, and I'm going to finish this with Ezekiel. Uh, Psalm 41, 7. And they... Uh, Psalm 41, 7. All th that hate me whisper together against me. Against me do they devise my hurt. An evil disease... I think that, that word disease is, can be translated as word. An evil word or disease say they cleave as fast unto them and now they and now that he lieth he shall rise up no more yea mine own familiar friend whom I trusted which did eat of my bread has lifted up his heel against me but thou O Lord be merciful unto me and raise me up that I may requite them by this I know that thou hast favored me because mine enemy does not triumph over me. The judgment of God uh, comes uh, near the end in such a way that I think the nations are going to know that uh, this can only come from God. You know, God, if the judgment begins in the house of God, you know, what shall be the end of them who don't believe? That The thing is that God... Uh, he brings certain judgments upon his own people, and uh, which were once represent re once representing uh, his word and his truth. And when they have fallen away, then his perfect righteousness uh, must go forth, and that judgment must happen. Um, this is Ezekiel. And if it's seen in the eyes of many nations, uh, in that sense, it's encouraging because I think that can result in uh, a great many people turning to God and knowing of His sovereignty and uh, and fearing God. The, f the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. This is Ezekiel thirty-eight twenty-one, and then uh, I'm going to end with Jeremiah. I thought that was in, but it wasn't. So let's just read these verses and then we'll close. Uh, Ezekiel 38:21, And I will call for a sword against him throughout all my mountains, saith the Lord God. Every man's sword shall be against his brother. Interesting. That's how God, you know, he can control that. He controls it to where every man's sword is against his brother. And uh, that is the judgment that comes. And I will plead against him with pestilence and with blood, and I will reign upon him and upon his bands and upon the many people that are with him and overflowing rain and great hailstones fire and brimstone here again we have the language of uh, Sodom and Gomorrah and the judgment of it thus will I magnify that is word Gadol thus will I magnify myself and sanctify myself and I will be known in the eyes of many nations and they shall know that I am the Lord now Ezekiel 12 also speaks of the people knowing of the judgment of God. Uh, that was Ezekiel 38, but 12 speaks about this also. There is also some important um, language how God, God's prophecies will not be any longer prolonged or drawn out or delayed. Um, when I saw this city, I was like, okay, we could have been living in that time where there is a certain delay process that had to go on. It was just part of God's you know, word to be fulfilled. And I want to close with these verses because I think it's important to see this. Ezekiel 12, 21. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, what is that proverb that ye have in the land of Israel, saying, The days are prolonged, and every vision faileth. And it seems like, you know, <laughs> people... Some people got really discouraged after the passing of 2011. And, you know, some were holding their hands up saying, what happened? What happened? Did the vision fail? Did, did God's word not come to pass? Uh, what's important to see in these verses is that there's a proverb uh, from the nation of Israel, and that's what they were saying back then. The days are prolonged and every vision faileth. Uh, this is verse 23. Now, this is God speaking, you know. This is, 
He knows the timing of everything. Uh, Tell them therefore, thus saith the Lord God, I will make this proverb to cease, and they shall no more use it as a proverb in Israel, but say unto them, The days are at hand, and the effect of every vision. For there shall no more I'm sorry, for there shall be no more any vain vision nor flattering divination within the house of Israel. For I am the Lord, I will speak, and the word that I will speak shall come to pass, and it shall be no more prolonged. For in your days, O rebellious house, will I say the word and I will, I'm sorry, will I say the word and will perform it, saith the Lord God. Again, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, behold, they of the house of Israel say, The vision that he seeth is for many days to come, and he prophesies of the times that are afar off. Therefore say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, There shall none of my words be prolonged any more, but the word which I have spoken shall be done, saith the Lord God. Two examples here, and it's just incredible. Uh, God will perform, he will perform his word, no more prolonging, no more delaying of his word. And when I saw that, I was like, wow, that, you know, that could have very well be the time that we've uh, encountered after the proclamation of Christ's uh, return in 2011. Uh, and this is kind of similar to the rebuilding uh, the decree that was made by Cyrus and then later the role was found uh, by Darius to to hasten the work that was proclaimed by Cyrus so to build the house of God again very very similar so <clears throat> that the house of God will be built you know when the plummet is in the hands of Christ uh, the seven eyes, which are the ser- seven spirits, uh, which go forth throughout the whole earth, and people will rejoice when th- we see the plummet in, in Christ's hands once again to rebuild this house and to finish the work. Um, this will go forth, and this relates so much to be fruitful and multiply. It relates to God being magnified in Joel two. It relates to different other passages in the Bible which speak of God's magnification and Him bringing down or abasing uh, the proud and the self, those who self-glory. And God is magnified and His glory will cover the earth. Man, I can't tell you how exciting this is. I mean, this is just an exciting time to be living because it's, it's like light at the end of the tunnel. It's like we're, we're seeing a glimpse of uh, how God's glory will, how his his reversal that he performs will be for the benefit of people because that benefit is, even though it comes at times as a judgment for chastisement, the nations will see this and I think many people will come to uh, the, the, the mouth of God, to his righteousness, they will flee to him and you know what's that verse that says uh, if it were told you you wouldn't believe it it's that that one verse I mentioned it before I don't know know it offhand um, God will perform a work that if it were uh, told you you would not believe it something similar I'm paraphrasing there but uh, it's an amazing thing what God does at the end here uh, you know he brings down the kingdom of Satan the believers consume and destroy unto the end something I talked about in Countdown. That was a big aspect of that book because the the consuming and destroying of uh, the kingdom of Satan until the end, it's almost like God um, gave, gave the believers into the hands of Satan for a period of time. And he had a certain precise time. He had a time to war against the Holy Covenant and war against the saints the Most High. And then God reverses things. And that grand reversal is by the hand of God as He gives the believers in Christ the privilege to consume and destroy 
unto the end, the kingdom of Satan. That is exciting because that consuming and destroying of the kingdom of the Satan who brings about destruction in people's lives will be seen as the letters of peace and truth go out, those letters, the gospel, the good news of Christ, uh, go forth and people become saved and we will be able to participate in, in this activity of bringing down uh, the kingdom of Satan and consuming and destroying it to the end until eventually when Christ comes on the last day he will consume him by the, the brightness of his coming so that prelude to that that last day that great day is that the believers will actively be participating in bring, sending out the letters of peace and truth and this is something um, I've been wanting to uh, really sort of rally people around um, whether you've taught before that salvation is over, whether you taught before other things that were um, not accurate according to God's word, there was a prolonging, and God's hand could have been in control of all of that. So, you know, the mocking had to come. All, every aspect of the the tribulation period and after um, this sort of lull period, this waiting period of the prolonging of uh, you know God's word there is a time where God will hasten his word and so don't be discouraged in that the rally for the people of God at this point those believers in Jesus Christ who are not ashamed of the name of Jesus Christ to lift up his name and to proclaim once again the good news of the gospel of the kingdom they repent and believe uh, you know turn to God now before that final last day which we are rapidly approaching uh, at this point we don't know when that is but we we know that the process that which leads to that great day is that the believers will consume and destroy the kingdom of Satan until the end and God's word and God himself will be magnified exciting news I I could not bring you a more exciting declaration this this whole past couple weeks from studying this and going back into the book Countdown and seeing how those, what I, I presented in those uh, passages of Joel 2 and, and God removing the northern and then being magnified, yeah, how he is going to do great things. How everything now is really tying together. There's more verses that support that whole idea of God being magnified. And you know, it's it's an absolute blessing to declare this because we've come out of a very sort of negative uh, time. This is the light at the end of the tunnel, folks. This is this is the good news. I think that a lot of believers have been waiting for, and I'm just you know sort of concerned that there's other people out there as believers who don't know about this, and it's it we must get this message out there. And I don't care if you if you use one of my music videos to send to somebody an email. Uh, the reason I do the music, not only to lift up the name of God, but also to draw people into uh, 2011 studies, the YouTube channel. So, and that can be done in a good way. Uh, use them. I mean, that's why I do them. You know, I don't. I'm not charging people for this. I'm. I'm doing all this because I think that if we use the tools we have that God has given us. Um, and whatever they are in your life, use them. Uh, I put out that plea last study to uh, have people contact me, and if you have, I really appreciate it. We're going to work together on this. Um, okay, I, let me close. Well, let me close with this final um, two verses here. This is, I'll jump into Jeremiah. Therefore say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, There shall none of my words be prolonged any more. But the word which I have spoken shall be done, saith the Lord God. Now this is Jeremiah 1.11. I'm only going to read two, two short verses here. Then I'm going to close. Jeremiah 1.11. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Jeremiah, what seest thou? And I said, I see a rod of an almond tree. Then said the Lord unto me, Thou hast well seen, for I will hasten my word to perform it. We could talk about 
the almond rod and what that represents in the next uh, study, if I remember to do so. Um, but the whole emphasis there is that God will hasten his word and will perform it. And even though there was a, maybe a lull period of a prolonged period where it seems, you know, I mean, what happened? I thought you know, things were supposed to happen. This is all according to God's plan. Every aspect of it. When you start to see that, it's exciting because it's like, okay, well, if that's true, then this is going to be true and this is going to come uh, down the road. And we all we have to do is be faithful to proclaim that God will be magnified. And God will be magnified, you know. Even if there's nobody proclaiming it, it God will be magnified. But I think God uses other people to um, proclaim his word ahead of time so that when it does happen, that um, his his honor his his glory that covers the earth uh, he's always sent people before to proclaim and it, it's not easy yeah you look at the life of Jeremiah he had a rough life I mean an extremely rough life and to be set up as an example to be under the bonds and the stocks uh, to be plunged into the the deepest darkest uh, dungeon and uh, just a rough life as he proclaimed God's word but like Job um, who also endured and we're given the example in the New Testament to look at Job look at the patience of Job how God blessed him uh, double what he had before and that I believe that whole blessing does relate to uh, be fruitful and multiply so as we continue on in these studies, let's keep all this in mind, how God's judgment will be, will be coming upon as a chastisement upon the fallen houses of God. Uh, the believers are commanded to depart out so that they don't partake in the sin and that they don't experience the plagues that are coming upon the fallen houses of God. But at the same time, God's magnification, His doing of great things he will perform his word and we have to proclaim that too we have to say that God will be magnified many people uh, will turn to Christ and uh, inherit eternal life eternal life um, and that's that's the message of the gospel that's the good news you know the good news is that Christ died for us and uh, he came as a substitute for our sins. I'm working on a music video right now and uh, it was a, requ a request from a friend uh, and I reviewed the uh, the lyrical content uh, of the song and I said you know what this song has really a good impact because it asks the question were you there when they crucified my Lord and they, when we answer that now I've, I've seen like Johnny Cash's um, old TV show where he sung that song and and uh, he said it was looking through the eyes of the Roman centurion who was there and how he he saw uh, the earth getting dark and the earthquake everything and he proclaimed truly this was the Son of God the song possibly could be looked at in that way through the eyes of the centurion when people would come up to him and say you know why do you believe and he would say well were you there I was there but if we internalize that and we think about that how the Lord laid the iniquity of us all upon him upon Christ we were all there and that's the impact of that video that we were there at the time of the cross which we're approaching that that celebration season uh, very rapidly now as we entered the, the resurrection of Christ during the Easter season Anyway, um, so that video is going to be posted hopefully this weekend too. Um, and then I'm going to try really hard to do a part uh, three, uh, Be Fruitful and Multiply, uh, Sunday. And uh, get it up probably Monday. And so it'll, it'll be just three videos all at once. So anyway, thank you for listening. Thank you and I appreciate all your prayers. Uh, if anybody wants a book countdown, just email me. Let me know. Uh, 2011studies at, at gmail.com uh, 
even sort of more important than that is that contact me because I, I think we need to get this work um, active and we need to uh, proclaim that God's going to be magnified um, during this time coming up. And hopefully we're going to get back into the study of the uh, in the glory of Moab, you know, God willing, and the 377 days. Because so as we approach that time, uh, it was at the end of that 377 days that God said, "Be fruitful and multiply." So that relates to our May 31st, um, from May 21, 2011, to May 31st, uh, 2012, a couple months we're entering that time of be fruitful and multiply good news folks i'm excited i'm 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 willing to to work as hard as i can and i really hope that others will too i i really hope and I, it's been encouraging that the people who have contacted me so uh, anyway thanks for listening and uh stay tuned we're going to continue to study this be fruitful and multiply my name is mario Catuzo. god bless you <music>